Hello, ladies and gentlemen, business owners. This is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. Uh, this video today is about the FAA investigated Boeing safety culture and what they found wasn't good. Well, what I found wasn't good, and but I'm going to tell you about it. Boeing in 2009 was made an FAA regulator, and it's just like federal agencies. After the horse escapes the barn, that's when they clamp down. And the horse escaped the barn for over 15 years. The horse escaped the barn when, as an FAA regulator, Boeing, they did not have to tell FAA in Washington about the MCAS system that they put on the airplane. And you're going to find that out today. We have Mr. Michael Whitaker. He was handed a bowl of shit, but, but he was on board when many of these things happened other than, I don't know where he was in 2009, but wherever it was, if he didn't know that the FAA was a, uh, gave regulatory authority to Boeing, shame on him. I'm gonna show you again, this video today is, the FAA investigated Boeing's safety culture and what they found wasn't good. Major faults in Boeing's safety management system according to the FAA. The same bosses in charge of employee salaries were also overseeing those staffers' safety concerns, creating a culture where the employees hesitated to speak up for fear of retaliation, the panel found. The expert panel found that many of Boeing employees at all levels of the company did not have a clear understanding of the company's safety culture, efforts, and procedures, nor did they grasp their purpose. Staff also did not know their role in safety management systems and were skeptical of the system's lasting power. The panel said it could not pinpoint a consistent and clear process. So let me go on and tell you this, because many times in the industry, I've been involved with quality for over 40 plus years. I've been in business now for uh, going on 13 years as of August uh, 2011. Actually, 2024 is going to be my 13th year. And uh, in 2013, we gave a speech at the American Society for Quality where Mr. David Levy was there, a Region 3 director who said, Mr. Guberman, ANAM has no problem with what you're doing. In fact, we support you, sir. In 2000, in 2016, Mr. Randy Dory who uh, at the time was the technical advisor, uh, and uh, he invited us to join either uh, ANAP or the IAF or both, but we could not do it and we refused to do it because in 2015, Randy had handed over um, leadership of the International Accreditation Forum to a communist Chinese national who is mandated by his country of origin, communist China, to take your data through the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. He says down here it is all voluntary. I'll leave it here for two minutes so that you take a peek. I'm sure that's enough. I'm sorry about the glare. Yes, he invited us. In 2015, though, when he handed over leadership, he was the vice president of ANAP, and he was also the uh, the chairman and principal on the IF tax report, which the IF again is a repository for both international and national um, accreditation bodies. And ANSI, ANAP are underwriters for um, those accreditation bodies on the IF and also ILAC, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation in Australia. So you have IAF, who is controlled by a communist Chinese national, and I, as a proud American, could not, could not see myself. Uh, joining ANAB or the IF at the time, nor afterwards, because we believe in true impartiality. We believe in competition. They do not, and you will find out. So I read you that little panel of the FAA. Now, I have a question for you. How can the FAA judge an FAA regulator? Because that's what they made Boeing. Now, Mike Whitaker is doing that, and I don't know whether he knows it or not, but from 2009 to present, Boeing is an FAA regulator. You will find out, too, that in 2002, Boeing, who mandates ANSI ANAB, the American National Standards Institute and the American National Crediting Board, where Boeing is a member, a board member, not only the board, but board of directors of ANAB and, and a board that can grant, suspend, and withdraw certification, ANAB, and also ANSI. Let's continue. You have the American National Standards Institute, which is private, not-for-profit, non-governmental, 
corporation that has federal agencies and corporations on board, and that's over a 100-year-old company. You have ANAB on board, okay? ANAB is on ANSI's board. In 2018, in 2018, <clears throat> ANSI took over complete control over ANAB, uh, and uh, they are not one company, but they're still two companies, separate entities, but they're an accreditation body, and so are they. You'll find their certification symbol, their ANC symbol, on SurfSafe accreditation. You will find them on the British Retail Consortium for Cargill Beef, and Cargill Beef sits on ANSI's board. You find something wrong with that? In 2018, Cargill had 138,000 pounds of chopped meat returned because of E. coli. Maybe it's because the... The certification is tainted too. They sit on the same boards. You'll find the same thing with Boeing. Between 2015 and 2021, as I told you, the uh, Communist Chinese National had the grips on the, uh, you know, on the IAF. He, they were, he was the uh, chairman, and he at the time was also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services in Beijing, China, which certified the suspect lab, which is no more suspect anymore in Wuhan, China. Because in 2018, you had a Miss Pamela Sale who gave a deposition in Texas concerning uh, laboratory accreditation. And she said from one laboratory to another, they basically lack protocols. They can take as they want and it's quality out of control. We now go ahead with Boeing. Boeing, Boeing. Yes, Boeing. Boeing in 2000, uh, well, actually, Boeing in 2002, we're going to get to it. They sit on ANSI's board. You know who they sit by? The FAA, the FAA. Now, here goes the kicker for Boeing. Um, Boeing states in their supplier portal that it must be ANSI, ANAB, uh, ANSI, A ASQ, or A A ANSI, ANAB, or international equivalent. And those international equivalents can be up there. I know Libya and North Korea have been taken off. And now, with Iran just several months ago, uh, they got uh, suspended from the IAF because of lack of payment, but the damage has already been done. The damage has been done because on their supplier portal, it says inter or internationally equivalent. It could be Iran or Pakistan at that time. In 2002, here it is. This is the kicker. Boeing put this supplier bulletin out where most of this news media is not looking into this with detail because it basically says here that on-site Boeing survey of suppliers or audits of suppliers quality system if need be. Our preference is to deal with proven suppliers with excellent quality performance and not have to do on-site quality system audits slash surveys. So what that basically means here ladies and gentlemen is this. Boeing's basically said to their suppliers and uh, as I showed you they're basically mandating it. There is no competition on there. We've, we tried in the beginning of our business, some of our customers tried to get in there. Now it's a different story. They have accepted our certificates without a problem, but there's still a couple of them who are very, you know, they have it on their purchase order. It must be ANSI ANAM. Now you know why. They sit on the boards. That's why. And this is what makes it bad. It's not even the FAA uh, regulatory issue. This is what they do. Boeing said to their, Boeing said to their, uh, Suppliers, you send us an ANSI ANAB accredited AS9100 certificate. Send it into us. Send us your parts. We no longer have to go out and do a surveillance audit to ensure that you're not working out of your garage, not working in a swamp. We don't have to worry about it. As long as you have that certificate accredited by ANSI ANAB, we're good to go. From 2002 to present, you can't make this shit up. You also have the factor, here you go, this is the verification that uh, the FAA made Boeing a regulator in 2009. It states the FAA increased the authority of Boeing's commercial airlines division to self-certify its own aircraft. Uh, and this is where that MCAS system comes in. Boeing, as a regulator, FAA, they're equivalent to FAA. They didn't have to tell them how many rivets they put in. They don't have to tell them how many bolts they put on the door. They don't have to tell them about the MCAS system, okay, because I will read it right here. The system allows Boeing employees to perform tasks on behalf of the FAA that include oversight of testing and product standards along with certification of aircraft technologies and new aircraft design. So where it says with um, 
Uh, it says, allow Boeing employees to perform tasks on behalf of the FAA that include oversight of testing and product standards, along with certification of aircraft technologies. That's MCAST. So that means the FAA gave them carte blanche. So when I read this to you, and this video today is about the FAA investigated Boeing safety culture and what they found wasn't good, it's worse than not good. It is terrible. And if Mr. Whitaker does not know that they gave regulatory authority to Boeing in 2009, shame on him. When you have David Calhoun and they have pictures of him on the golf course, I realize he needs his relaxation time. But if I'm a regulator, FAA regulator, and I'm the CEO, roll up your sleeves and go down in there. The only problem is, is he's a number cruncher. He doesn't know about aircraft, but he knows about dollars and cents, and that's what counts. And that's a terrible thing when you're dealing with a multi-million dollar aircraft that is taking people from point A to point B. And most of you out there say, well, Daryl, more people get killed in car accidents every year than airplanes. But when an airplane goes down, it takes out between 100 and 300 people or more. How do you like them apples? But as long as it's not your relative's ass that's on the plane, you really don't give a damn, do you? Eh, too bad. As David Foster Wallace said, I've been trying to hammer it into you, the truth will set you free, but not until it is finished with you. And one of my favorite is a Thomas Paine quote from Common Sense. When speaking the truth, it is many times, hold on, like administering medication to the dead. So... What makes matters worse, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, is when you have Boeing as an FAA-designated regulator since 2009, in 2017, skipping quality processes and standards and fudging documentation. Isn't that nice? You like that? And most recently, the Department of Justice gave them an $8.1 million fine because between the years of 2007 and 2018, Boeing was fudging documentation on their autoclaves that were making parts for the V-22 offspray in their Boeing Bell facility, composite facility in Pennsylvania. You find anything wrong with that? As an FAA regulator. I think what happened is maybe Mike Whitaker was teaching them how to fudge documentation because as an FAA regulator, who else is going to teach them but the FAA? 203-556-1493 or Daryl, tqrs at yahoo.com. I thank you.